morning everyone how are you all hope you are all fine so welcome back to our social study class midwar india and the political transitions whereas in the last class we were discussing about the qutbuddin aibak qutbuddin aibak is considering as the founder of a slavery dynasty or we can call it as a gulam dynasty he was one of the prominent and efficient ruler of uh, the turks one has continued his ruling in india after the muhammad ghori so after the completion of uh, the period of qutbuddin aibak the next ruler one who to whom uh, about whom we are going to discuss is altamash or we can call him as iltamash so altamash is also a slave of qutbuddin aibak as we are discussing about the gulam dynasty or the slavery dynasty then definitely the people those who are going to be come in this uh, uh, chapter so maximum are belongs to the slaves only so qutbuddin aibak he was the slave of muhammad ghori altamash was the slave of uh, qutbuddin aibak so basically as altamash he belongs to which family from where he was and uh, what are his achievements then how he has become the ruler of uh, delhi so these are the things so we shall concentrate in today's class so please focus towards the board altamash he belonged to ilbari family and was a slave of uh, qutbuddin aibak even this family is also belongs to the afghanistan ilbari family is also belongs to afghanistan and basically he is from the ilbari family and moreover he was the slave of qutbuddin aibak he was the administrator of uh, gwalior and become the successor of uh, qutbuddin aibak in the initial stage when the qutbuddin aibak was uh, alive so by the time qutbuddin aibak declared uh, altamash as the administrator of the gwalior so he need to look after he need to take care of entire the gwalior position so because of that reason he got uh, the authority of administrating on the gwalior then in later period after the death of qutbuddin aibak as he was not having any children and all there is no uh, successor office so because of that reason he has given entire his property he has given his entire the kingship to his slave that's uh, altamash so altamash has become the next ruler of uh, uh delhi or uh, the successor of qutbuddin aibak so when the moment qutbuddin aibak's uh, slave altamash has become the new ruler of uh, delhi it was uh, intolerable for the ghazni family son as we know very well that uh, uh, ghazni fam uh, mohammad ghori he was trying to attack on the ghazni's family or the ghazni's uh, kingship by the time the ghaznis were much stronger on the mohammad ghori so because of that reason he changed his mind and he attention he paid his attention towards delhi peshawar and lahore i told you very clearly so in the similar manner right now the uh, even though the ghazni family or the ghazni dynasty it was there on india so when the altamash has declared as a new ruler of delhi it was certainly not at all tolerable by the ghazni kings uh, like as uh, tajuddin eldos and uh, since the uh, rulers nasiruddin kabacha so tajuddin eldos and uh, nasiruddin kabacha these two were belongs to the ghazni dynasty so ghazni dynasty rulers were intolerable for uh, the altamash ruler how can the slave can be the ruler anyha the gori when he was uh, returning back he was not having any family uh, issues with him so because of that reason he just made qutbuddin aibak as to be the ruler ruler that we can understand but how the qutbuddin aibak can make altamash as to be the ruler of delhi and altamash how can he so this was the point which was uh, running in the mind of uh, ghazni's rulers tajuddin eldos and nasiruddin kabacha so therefore the nasiruddin and the tajuddin together they attacked on uh, altamash together they attacked on altamash for defeating him they just want to smash altamash and capture entire the delhi in their control but whereas these two people i mean to say tajuddin eldos and the nasiruddin kabacha they were not knowing the strength of altamash so without knowing the strength they just put their hand into the fire that's altamash then what the altamash did with them that we'll see now so altamash he fought back in against of tajuddin eldos and nasiruddin and he defeated the these two members the ruler of uh, sindh and the uh, ghazni's ruler he has defeated and not only has defeated from them he has captured uh, a few most important places sir the places like as the uh, rantambore mandora then gwalior bilsa ajmer banaras and kanauj so now these two members they have lost much important places of theirs 
Ranthambore, Mandora, Gwalior, Bilsa, Ajmer, Banaras and Kanauj. So these places have fall into the control of uh, Altamash. So therefore the Altamash has become a super power person in India during those days. Then one thing is that you can do it. 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 नासिर उद्दीन सुनने इल्दे ने उन्हें डिफीट मार दिया उन्हें सोल्स बुटो इडी और दहली वन वशों पर स्कोर्टी भी अंतर नौ देश दिन द हो दरो आदर अल्टमो शाहर के तक तुम बने चाना क्षणा की था सो हाँ क्या की और मेले तेरे को तो और अली रूहन ता यश्चो प्रदेश गलना तकोन बुटा अंदरे ಅಲ್ತಮಶ್ವ So by watching this achievement, by watching the successful nature of uh, Al-Tamash, the Baghdad's uh, Khalifa, as I have told you, Khalifa, uh, this is the word which uh, the Muslim people are calling for the leaders of Muslims. So the leader of uh, Baghdad or uh, the leaders of uh, Muslim leaders, uh, he's, uh, he has uh, entitled, uh, he has given a title to, he has issued a, light, a letter or uh, he has uh, entitled to Al-Tamash that uh, bestowing administration power. He has given complete administration authority to the Altamash, bestowing administration power he has called him. And moreover than these things, uh, even we can notice that Altamash, he was having uh, an excellent idea, not only for uh, an excellent idea, he was having for maintaining the administration of his kingdom. Uh, he has divided entire his kingdom into uh, various, uh, diff uh, various uh, provinces and uh, in those days, uh, the provinces are called as uh, Ikhtas. The provinces are called as Ikhtas and provinces are nothing but a states. So the country which he was leaving, though he was leaving in India, but in earlier days in one India itself, we can find 356 different countries were there. So each ruler was having his own country. Hampi, it's a country of theirs. Vijayanagara, it's a country. Then again, Bijapur, it's a country. Then Bidar, one country. So like that, the countries they were having. So here, Altamash, he has uh, divided his country or Delhi and other Sultanate or the other areas into provinces. Provinces, it means a uh, state. And that provinces in Arabic language, they are calling it as uh, Ikhtas. Provinces are calling as uh, Ikhtas. And the ministers, even not only has uh, divided the Ikhtas, even for looking after the each province, for taking care of each state, he has appointed uh, Ikhtadar. The person one who is taking care of the ikhta is called as a ikhtadar. So ikhtadar it means what? The ministers or the government officials, those who are taking care of the states. And along with these things, uh, uh, Altamash has uh, divided uh, along 40 soldiers he has divided uh, for, uh, for, for uh, giving him a proper advice in each and every sector. Uh, the, so suppose if it is a field of administration, so certain soldiers should be there or the certain uh, prominent uh, minister should be there for advising him in a correct path. If it is the field of uh, uh, what you can call financial matters and all, then there are some soldiers, those who are prominent one, those who are the ministry, uh, able to ministry. So they must have to give some advices. Uh, so like this, the 40 uh, members were, sorry, 40 soldiers were appointed for uh, advising him in each and uh, every situation. Sir. And uh, during the period of his Altamash, he has uh, introduced the coins like as the silver and the gold coins he has introduced for uh, circulation in the market area. So my dear children, this is what uh, the achievement of uh, Altamash. Then after the death of Altamash, the next point it has come who has to be the ruler of uh, Delhi. Because Altamash was having two children and out of two, one is a son and the son name is uh, Rukbuddin Firoz. Son name is Rukbuddin Firoz. And whereas this Rukbuddin Firoz, he was not uh, that much of a capable person to maintain the administrative field of uh, Delhi. 
so therefore the people of uh, Delhi they were just uh, thinking that uh, how can the Rukmuddin can be the ruler because he's not having a proper sense of to rule and uh, neither he is having uh, the proper physical strength to be maintain the dynasty when they were in the dilemma condition situations uh, by the time the second uh, or, uh, or else another uh, uh, daughter sorry the first son was unfit then again he was having a daughter and the daughter name is uh, Razia Sultana so then the Razia has become the new ruler of uh, Delhi. The moment when she has become the new ruler of uh, Delhi, it was uh, a quite a hesitating matter for entire the provincial officials. The reason is very simple because she was uh, the first woman lady in India, one who has become the ruler, one who is called as a Sultana. The people, the, the male kings are there in a sense, for them they are calling as a Sultan. And now the female ruler is there, that's a Sultana. And official members, they were feeling hesitation to work under her because uh, how can a male, can that uh, male domination, ego and all what we can call. So because of that reason, how can a male can be work under the female? So that was the point which was uh, troubling them in their mind. How can the female can be the ruler of us? How can she order us? So these are the points which were completely itching the mind of those provincial officials. So then Razia Sultana, when she has become the ruler, she was, uh, uh, whenever the, she used to enter into the war field, she was uh, dressing up like as a man and she used to fight as equal to the men in the battlefield. And uh, not only these things, even she has extended her territory from the Sindh to Bengal. She has extended her territory from the Sindh to Bengal. Then in later periods, uh, the provincial officers or the members, those who were there under her, they did not uh, uh, felt good to be work under the Razia Sultana. So therefore, they killed her. Razia Sultana killed. So Razia has got uh, entitled. The title is called as a Sultana. So this is what the things, my dear children, which we can notice about uh, the Altamash, then Altamash's son, uh, Rukbuddin Firoz, and Altamash's daughter, Razia Sultana. Whereas in the next class, we will concentrate about Ghiyasuddin Balban, uh, what is he and from where he belongs to and what are his achievements. These are the things we will concentrate till then. Please stay safe. Thank you.